Hi and welcome to Tengi Talks TV and Movies. I'm Tengi and today's movie is the 1960 British horror movie City of the Dead. Now this one stars Christopher Lee, one of my favourite horror stars. It was the directorial debut of John Moxie who went on to direct the very first Night Stalker movie, the one that spawned the Kolchak the Night Stalker series and I will shortly be reviewing that on this channel. It was produced by Milton Subotsky, who went on to found Amicus Films. So it has a lot of interesting horror people connected with this movie. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect. For some reason, I've avoided this one over the years because I've had some idea that it wasn't great or that I wouldn't like it. But I'm totally willing to let all those preconceptions go. And I'm hoping to be pleasantly surprised by City of the Dead. Let's check out City of the Dead. Oh, no. No. oh my god, twist! Oh, I did not see that coming. What? What? That was brilliant. Oh, nice score so far. Oh, I love these opening titles too. The great Valentine Dial, that legendary star of British stage screen and voice acting. I don't really know any of the other actors in this though. I love these photos of the enigmatic monks. Ooh! That's great. Lovely opening shot. So I read that this movie was filmed in the UK, but it's set in the US. These Puritan ladies are wearing an awful lot of makeup. Valentine Dial. Burn the witch. I think he has consorted with her. Why are they running the film backwards? <laughs> it just looks weird. Help her. Help her. Oh. So Jethro the Puritan's imploring Satan to help her. Maybe more than one witch in this city. Oof! He should perhaps be a little bit more discreet about praying to Lucifer when he's standing in the middle of a crowd of Puritans. Make this city an example of thy vengeance. Curse it! Curse it for all eternity! And let curse. me be the instrument of thy curse! Make it a curse! Curse! A curse? A curse? Get the impression these um, extras have been told to shake their fists because a lot of them are doing it. Superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Parading around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. You the gotta love Christopher Lee. In agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn witch, burn witch, burn, burn. Can well, you imagine oh, taking a class with Christopher <laughs> Lee on witchcraft? I can't think of anything better than that. Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. He's really bringing the brooding intensity to this role. This is quite an office Christopher Lee's got. This is Nealus, so you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but... Uh, Christopher Lee's up to I'm something. Going to my plans with no! When I look into a microscope, Driscoll, I see bacteria swimming, fighting, existing. That's real. These witches, they were persecuted and These English in actors are uh, pulling off their U.S. accents people. with varying degrees of success. Three years later, of, yeah. three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, People came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. 
Oh, stop. I just love the gravitas that Christopher Lee brings to the horror genre. He just sells the reality of any movie that he's in. Also, super handsome. Honey, when you get to, um... No. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the subject. Oh, what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstition. A lot of mansplaining going on in this movie. But suppose the women were... Better do her research. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. That's a lot of mist. Um. Ooh. That was a nice creepy moment. Lovely shot. Does that sign say Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Uh oh. oh good. I so Valentine Dial's character still alive from the previous witch burning scene in the past? I love these people just standing there in the darkness, waiting to be illuminated by the car's headlights. It's very creepy. Oh, there it is. Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Nullis has that room. <gasps> oh, I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Nullis? Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was You've got to have a room. mute townsperson in your gothic film. Uh, often told her not I to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. Uh, may I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. So I guess this is the, the, the witch who was burned in the 1690s and she's still the guests are never about alive in some way. Well... Valentine Dial is great in a horror context. He brings that same gravitas that uh, Christopher Lee has. That's why he was so great at playing baddies. <laughs> and that they both have those wonderful deep voices. I love them as a super creepy couple. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. Was he supposed to be blind or was he just a really selfish actor? Not looking her in the eye. So it's a town full of Satanists with one Christian and that's the the priest in the church. Of his side has made him she seems very familiar. I don't know where I've seen her I'm before, though. Smoke machines working overtime in this movie. This lady's quite familiar, too. Come in. The obligatory underwear scene. Uh oh. I'm enjoying this movie, but I'm finding the pace of it a little bit slower than I would like. It does almost have the feel of a TV movie. Oh! I like the use of the cobwebs in that. It did make it creepier. Here we go with the underwear again. Why do they have to do that? You know, so many horror film killings. You've got to get the, the actress's boobs out. I think the problem with this film so far as a horror film is that the stakes haven't been very high. Nan wasn't worried at all about the creepy things in the town until the moment she got sacrificed by the witches. You know, we're 40 minutes in. That's kind of I'd like to speak low stakes, Barlow, I think. I've seen this lady in something just recently, and it's driving me crazy. Yes, we're from the sheriff's office, please. There is something slightly off about the um, the art direction in this film, in that the sets all look so much like sets that have just been finished that morning. They don't look lived in or real. And it's hard to say exactly why. 
Don't hurt the bird, Christopher Lee. Nice cape. Gosh. Oh Lord of Light, accept the sacrifice. Ooh. No. <laughs> Is this in his office? <laughs> in his office at the university? He's got this this tap like a gaping mouth on the wall. It is. <laughs> that lion's head. <laughs> is that a real taxidermied lion's head? It's, it's a bit odd. You can't beat a bit of morning drinking in a movie. That's what the police said. Look at that face. What a fantastic face. Man's luck, all right. See, once again, creepy moments, but there's nothing really at stake. A living descendant of those who were cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. And what do these two want, apart from sacrificing the occasional Another attractive day. lady? And tomorrow. The whole town is already populated by witches and devil worshippers. What more do these two want? I think that's the problem. There's no sort of objective in the film. And we've also switched main characters halfway through. I'd let Christopher Lee draw me into his witch cult, wouldn't you? Jazz flute. Gotta have some jazz flute in your horror film. What do any of these scenes achieve? All this stuff with the service station. It's not advancing the story at all. We don't need to see how they get there. Ooh, see, that was more interesting. I like that. I think I'd be annoyed if I was an undead uh, eternal witch and I still had to do hotel admin. The same room my, my sister had. <laughs> so they're wearing the same outfits from before, standing in the same places as before. Are any of these people actually alive or are they all undead? Like the the witch couple. See why doesn't this mute servant girl write her notes at home? Then when she comes to work, she can just slip them under the pillow and do whatever she wants. You've got to have a blind clergyman in the same way that you've got to have a mute servant girl. Blind clergyman with a haunted face. How do you do, sir? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. Why has he lived here all this time if the town is full of witches and he can't do anything about it? I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God. It's all a little bit um, horror movie by numbers, I think. It's, it's nothing we haven't seen before. Uh oh. So Christopher Lee was burned as a witch as well. Yet he's got a job in the university. Oh. Did he even bring a cross? Like they told him he had to use the cross to defeat the witches. Has he got a cross with him? <laughs> that could have been done better. I say this as someone who who has really severe arachnophobia. That spider did not scare me at all. <gasps> you can't kill them because they're already dead. So they're dead and they drink blood. That makes them vampires, no? Why does it always have to be women who are killed for their blood? If they're going to do that, they need to at least explain why. Maitland! Get to a cross! A cross! The whole 
cemetery is filled with crosses. <laughs> They're not bothered by the crosses in the cemetery around them. What does it matter if the cross is 10 feet away or 2 feet away? That's the problem here. There's no internal logic to it. See, these visuals are quite good. But... I mean, there is some nice imagery in this film. That's a great image. That's pretty good. But why does the cross have to be... Why does it have to be close to them like that? To affect them, when it wasn't that far away before. See, this, this sequence is really nice. I love the way this guy is being shot, lighting, all that works. That's a nice image too, that works. Ooh, that's the only real horror moment in this whole movie. But why did that happen? <laughs> why was she, why was she uh, all burnt at the end? That didn't, no, didn't really make sense to me. Well, I have to say I did find City of the Dead a little bit unsatisfying. I think the real problem with it is the story has no kind of engine driving it. There's no sort of um, central motivating force going through the movie. It's just a series of things that happens. Initially, we've got the setup of um, Nan, who's going there to investigate the witch story. But that doesn't really go anywhere. She just gets uh, sacrificed. And then it all just switches to people trying to find her. But again, it's, there's no urgency to any of it. It just sort of drifts along with no pace, no build-up of any kind of tension. And the real nature of the witches, the people who are occupying this creepy village, is never satisfactorily explained either. Because are they all undead? That's what, that's what it seemed to be at the end. <laughs> and if they're undead and they feed on blood, aren't they vampires? And also, trying to establish them as a an evil, dangerous presence, I think is difficult when all they actually do is kill one woman twice a year. The stakes are just not high enough. Having said that, there were things I enjoyed about it. I thought the cast was sensational. Um, I did look up that actress, Better St. John, who I recognised, the lady who played the antique stealer, and I saw her in the Hammer film, The Snorkel. That's why she's so familiar to me. And the mute servant girl was played by the actress who later appeared as, I think, the neighbour in the British comedy series Fresh Fields. And that's where I know her from. But I did love Christopher Lee in this. I thought he was wonderful. He's always wonderful. I just wish he'd had more to do. Patricia Jessel and Valentine Dial as the two main witches I thought were really good. They had a great presence for a horror movie. Um, very effective and very creepy. The film did have some good moments, especially that scene at the end where the, um, the witches were catching fire in their robes in the cemetery. But again, it was kind of undermined by the questions that were never resolved about why the crosses didn't affect them when they were all around them. It was only when the man brought the cross slightly closer to them that they all just burst into flames. So I guess really I would describe City of the Dead as a kind of workmanlike horror movie. It was a sort of horror by numbers, but to me it had the feeling of a film that wasn't made by horror lovers. And I think you can tell the difference when someone's just going through the motions or when they have a real passion for the genre. And to me, this didn't really come across as having that passion and love for horror. Still, I'm glad I finally got to see it. And, you know, I'll watch anything with Christopher Lee in it because he's always such great value. If you have any thoughts on City of the Dead, I'd love it if you'd share them in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.